everybody, Ty Campbell with Teakin Builds, and today it is my absolute pleasure to introduce you all to the brand new Vanquish VS410 Phoenix. Now the Phoenix is the fourth version of the popular Vanquish VS410 platform. This one has a few tricks up its sleeve, the most notable feature being the brand new VFD Twin transmission. Now what does Twin mean? It means Twin Shift, so there's actually two shifters, so you got two servos in there. One controls your dig, so you can lock and unlock the rear axle for those really tight radius turns. The other is a three-speed selectable overdrive for the front axle. Now those three speeds are the standard 6.5% overdrive. That means it's overdriving your front wheels 6.5% over what the rears are turning. The second position is a 33% overdrive. So when you really need more front wheel speed to get up and over an obstacle or to make a really tight radius turn, and the third position is free wheel, so you're opening up that front end and you're running in two wheel drive. The second feature on the VX410 is that it is a portal axle truck, but unlike the Ultra, these aren't machined aluminum axles, these are a plastic F10 portal axle. So you're gonna reduce a little bit of the weight and you're also going to reduce a little bit of that price tag so you can get into a VS410 at a more budget friendly price point. So it looks like the body on this truck, completely different from the origin body styles we've seen on the past VS410s. This one definitely looks like it has a little bit of that old school Toyota vibe and I love that a lot. I've really been a fan of old Toyota FJs. This one looks like they took a lot of inspiration from the FJ45 pickup. So I'm pretty excited to crack that open and just see what the interior's like, what that rear cage section is like and how the whole thing goes together. Looks like we've got contoured rock sliders that in origin fashion, the body slides down into those so it's gonna hold the sides of the body nice and tight. We've got a stubby front bumper with a cutout for a winch so it looks like we're gonna be able to throw a winch servo into this truck super easily and be able to pull ourselves out of some sticky situations. Got full stainless steel links with M4 rod ends and stainless steel pivot balls so we know all of the links on this truck are gonna be super strong. And it looks like we've got some molded inner fender liners on the front end with a spot for rock lights already into the molding. So mounting rock lights on this should be really easy. Looks like our frame is the same as VS410s of the past just by looking at the pictures. Looks like our shocks are similar to incision shocks that we've seen on previous VS410 trucks. So that's about enough drooling over the pictures on the outside of the box. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to crack this thing open and lay out all of our parts, start turning some wrenches. So I've got big plans for this truck. It's gonna have a lot of teak and electronics in it, starting with our RX-4. Rock 412 3100 KV combo. These are element proof, so we're gonna be able to run it in wet conditions and snow, mud, all that stuff, and not have to worry about any of that stuff. Got our brand new Tekken 3S power cell right here, so we'll check that out here in a little bit. And a plethora of Tekken servos. We're gonna have a T440 for steering and two T120 low pros to control all the shifting mechanisms on the VFD twin transmission. So that's our electronics package that we're going to go with along with a Spectrum DX5 rugged radio and a five channel receiver to control all of our servos and everything we're going to have going on in this vehicle. And I've also got our wheel and tire combo right here. Spoiler alert, already built a set of these. I couldn't help myself. I love putting together new wheels and tires. These are Incision MR307 methods from Vanquish, of course, and we've got them stuffed with Crawler Innovations 4.5 inch Lil Nova foams. These are the comp cut right here with the soft outer. Now I know what you're thinking, that's a huge foam. It's not gonna fit in that tire tie. Yes, it does. That is the tire it's made to go in. I went with 4.50s because I think this rig might be somewhere around seven or eight pounds. So those should work pretty well and provide us with good sidewall stability along with good tread conformity on obstacles to give us good forward bite. And the tire they're going in is the Axial R35 Nitto Trail Grappler. I picked this tire because I really like the scale aspect ratio of it. It's got a nice narrow tread pattern. And this wheel design, I just really like it. It's classic, it screams old school off-road. That's what we're gonna go with on our Phoenix. Let's see what we got going on in here. Oh, 
this is always my favorite part of these builds. Check out this body. This thing is awesome. It's like it is all pre-cut and pre-drilled. So putting this together is gonna be super easy. We don't have to drill anything. All the holes are right where they need to be. We've got a full interior in this guy. So it looks like fairly similar to the Origin Scout style bodies on the older kits where it looks like the door handles are gonna hold this guy in. We'll have a grill and the radiator assembly and all that stuff up in the front. We'll throw all the, all the headlights. <clears throat> and it looks like the back end of this is kind of a truggy style. So it's gonna have this tube assembly. I'm assuming bolted onto the back of the cab. And then we've got our bedsides right here that will mount onto that. And hopefully there's room for a spare tire in there. Looks like bag A and B are our F10 portal axles. So we're gonna start with those here in a little bit. And then I wanna get into that VFD twin and see how that transmission works. I'm really excited about that one. Looks like the shocks are a little bit different than incision shocks we've seen on previous kits. So that'll be interesting throwing these guys together. Frame rails are our VS410 frame rails. Looks like they are the same rails as all the previous trucks. So the backbone of this thing is definitely VS410. And then the Phoenix portion is obviously the plastic axles. And that body looks way different than all the other versions. It's like here's all the parts for our VFD twin right here in bag D. And wheels and tires, looks like we've got the VXT 4.65, so same wheels and tires that come with the previous kits, although these wheels definitely look different. These are a different style KMZ wheel, so we'll check those out here in a bit when we get to putting those together. Looks like we've got some drive shafts here. We don't get incisions in this one, looks like we get these plastic ones. Uh, and this style actually hold up really well, so we'll uh, definitely put those to use on this. It's like all of our stainless links, so it's going to put a lot of weight and strength down low. And looks like our bumpers and the rock sliders and the battery tray, the radiator parts and all the little fake fans and stuff are in this guy. Alright, so let's dive in. Let's get our manual out and get some tools and start putting this thing together. So I got all the parts for our front F10 portal axle laid out. The first thing that's catching my eye are these brass axle tube inserts. It looks like these are gonna slide into the axle housing. So they'll be sitting inside about like this. And that's gonna add strength from the inside of our tube and a little bit of extra added weight. Looks like we've got some VXD style universal shafts. These should give us a pretty good steering angle with portals. Uh, normally with portal axles, there's a little bit of a limitation with your steering. Um, so we're definitely going to want to make sure that we set our endpoints properly when we get around to that part of our build. Got your standard Vanquish 6 bolt ring and pinion locker set up. And it looks like our portal axle box gears are heavy duty machined hardened gears as well. Oversized stub shaft. So these are actually an M5 threaded stub axle that should give us added strength out on our wheels. And I gotta say the plastic on these housings feels really beefy. It's just like all the other bracing that you would find on the VS410 kit. So I think these are gonna stand up to quite a bit of abuse and they're gonna slide over the rocks really nicely and not hang up as bad. Well, I'm gonna start getting our locker assembled, get our third member put together, and hopefully we'll have an axle here in a few minutes. I always wanna use thread lock when building these lockers. You don't want these screws backing out on you wreak havoc inside your diff housing. Sometimes these screws are a little bit finicky, so I actually like to spin opposite. So you go left hand and you'll feel the threads kind of lock like that. And then you know that it's actually gonna properly seat and you're not at risk of cross threading it. So now that we've got our locker assembled, it's time for the carrier bearings to go on and our bearing retainers. But first, we're gonna pack these bearings full of grease because they are a shieldless bearing. So the ball bearings are actually open and uh, packing them full of grease is gonna help keep water out and keep everything rolling nice and smooth. I'm gonna put our bearing in our hand. This is gonna get a little bit messy, but we're going to put some grease on this side. flip that over we want a decent amount of grease on our hand so that we can pack all these bearings full and basically you're just going to scrape this across your hand and kind of use the palm of your hand 
and pushing to push the grease into this bearing. So now we've got that guy all packed full of grease and it's ready to go on our locker. Bearings are all greased up. Now we gotta put the bearings in our third member. Then our pinion can go in. Bearing retainers. Drop this onto our third member. I'd have to wiggle these gears a little bit just to get them to mesh up. So we've got our whole third member here. Everything's meshing really nice. Now we want to put a nice coating of grease all over these diff gears. And that's spinning nice and free, so now we can bolt this onto our axle housing. In go our brass axle tubes and our five by 11 by four bearings. So this is where the actual portal section of our axle happens and you have this gearbox. It has two gears and that effectively drops the stub shaft or the axle that your wheel is going to bolt onto further down inside of the C-hub. So what that effectively does is raise the axle without raising the entire suspension. So we're gonna get more clearance underneath our axle housing by dropping our wheels and tires down. So let's get our gears in here. Pay real close attention to these bearing sizes. They are very close to each other. The five by 11 by four goes in the top and the six by 12 by four goes in the bottom. Then our stub axle can go through here and then we need our axle pin. I already put Loctite on the set screw on the wheel hex, so this guy can slide on. So that's the outside cover. The inside portion, we need to drop this bearing in first. This is a six by 11 by four. And then the 12 by 18 by four goes in here. And this is our right knuckle. So our axle shaft actually rides inside this large size bearing. This is our top portal gear and it's keyed onto this square shaft. Before we stick together, I'm gonna put a bunch of grease all over these so they're nice and lubricated. So I got both boxes complete. Now we're gonna go ahead and slide these onto our axle housing, put our kingpin screws in. We'll be done with our front axle. Boom, we got both F10 portal axles finished and check this out. There's a billet aluminum full oil fill cap that goes on this rear diff, just like the full size ones. And they even include this sweet little tool in order to thread it in. And that's just one of those rad little scale details that you come to expect from a company like Vanquish. I love the fact that that is not plastic. There is a plastic one included, but we don't even need that. Actually, I probably should keep that. Well, I gotta say these axles definitely feel stout. They are over-engineered, the plastic it feels really awesome, and those Brax axle tubes are just kind of the icing on the cupcake. These are going to definitely perform really well, and I'm gonna leave them on the Phoenix for a little bit, but I have a feeling that they're probably gonna find a home on one of my old comp buggies. So I'm actually looking at that on the shelf right now, thinking that it needs to be revived, and I'm thinking that these F10 portals are going to be the perfect axle for that kind of project. So 
So we've got the F10 portal axles all built. They're greased up and they are ready to go other than links, which are gonna come here in a little bit. Now it's time to get our main chassis assembly put together. And that just consists of our two frame rails, our front and rear brace, our center skid, our two rock slider panels, four shock hoops, the pan hard link, and a bunch of hardware. So I got my drill all charged up. Let's start running some screws in. So our chassis is exactly the same as the Origins and VS410s, the Pros, the Ultras that came before it. So putting this together is pretty easy and definitely familiar if you've ever built a VS410 before. There's a lot of hardware, just make sure that you double check the screw sizes because there are some 8mm and some 10mm cap heads on this, as well as some countersink heads for the shock hoops. So make sure all the hardware is where it's supposed to be and all this stuff screws together pretty easily. Still rocking my skill IXO. It's almost 13 years old now and still drilling away like a champ. So that is our chassis. It's all ready to go. This thing is stout, man. All this plastic and these frame rails, everything's high clearance for our portal axles. So now we're gonna throw the T440 steering servo in while we can get underneath it and get the servo horn on there. And hopefully that twin transmission is next. So our first bit of Tekken jewelry is going to be our T440 steering servo. And this servo is gonna be good for about 500 ounces of torque if we wanna run it on 8.4 volts. These have a nice billet aluminum housing, three piece O-ring sealed. They are element proof. So you really don't have to worry about water and snow and mud and splashing them. I've had plenty of these wet lots of times and have had absolutely no issues with them. So we're gonna drop this into our VS410 and then we're gonna put the 20 millimeter Vanquish servo horn on as per recommended by Vanquish. Our servo goes on the left side of the frame with the spline facing to the front of the truck. So our servos do come with a 20 millimeter dual clamp crowbar arm, we call it. It is a double clamping design, but the offset is just a little bit too close to the servo top in order to clear the frame rail in our VS410. So I've got the Vanquish servo horn here. This is the 20 millimeter one that you're gonna need for the steering and it is 25 tooth spline. So it's gonna drop right onto our T440 servo. So the nice thing about Tekken servos is they don't have any physical stop points and you can program the center point anywhere you want it to be if you've got a hot wire. So I highly recommend you grab a hot wire if you're gonna use one of our servos. So that means that we can just throw our servo horn on in any orientation we like. We'll spin this guy so we can get at these clamp screws and you wanna tighten the clamp screws first. This is what actually clamps the horn onto the servo. And then the horn screw can go in. I like to use an M3 by six. And this one doesn't have to be super tight because the clamp screws are what's holding this on. We'll spin this guy back around to where it needs to be. And we'll be able to center that when we hook it up to our hot wire. All right, so we're making good progress on this guy today. Got our chassis all put together, front and rear axles are assembled, and now it's finally time to start checking out that new VFD twin transmission. I'm really excited about this one, so here we go. This is not your standard three gear transmission. That took me forever to lay all these parts out, but it looks pretty sweet, I gotta say. And it looks like it's actually gonna go together fairly easily. We just gotta follow them instructions. So this one I'm really excited about. It has tons of functionality and I think it's gonna kill it out on the trails. And if you're really into comp style trailing, this is gonna be awesome because you'll be able to lock the rear axle, free wheel, free wheel the front axle, and you have two different overdrive speeds for the front axle alone. So this is like the Rubik's cube of transmissions in an RC car. I'm really excited to put this one together. So looks like we've got a slipper clutch on this and I'm definitely gonna use it. I'm a big fan of slippers because it's just gonna save you from snapping any parts. If the thing is bound up so bad that it's gonna slip, 
I'd rather it slip and just move my truck than have something break and have to tear all this stuff back open to fix it. Looks like we're gonna need our Rock 412 so we can put this guy in because it's not gonna be able to be mounted later on once it's in the truck. So we'll crack that open real fast and get all this stuff going. Well, let's get this sensor harness plugged in real quick and secured with the sensor clip. We're also going to put some dielectric grease in the ports. That's going to protect it from moisture so that you'll have less of a chance of it cutting out and kicking into sensorless mode while we're out driving. So we just want to take some of this grease and fill the sensor port on the back. Plug our sensor wire in. I like to put a little bit on the outside of the plug just to cover up any exposed contacts that might be showing. Take our sensor clip and slide it onto our sensor cable. Make sure we get all the wires in there. We include a longer size screw that'll help hold this on. Now our motor's ready to mount up to our motor plate. Finally time for the VFD, the Vanquish Forward Design. This is probably the coolest RC transmission I think I've ever seen. It's definitely a game changer. Uh, this is the fourth transmission that I've put together and I definitely like on this one that there is a slipper clutch option. So you can see right here that it's got this polyurethane spacer instead of a spring. Uh, so we'll mess with that once we actually get this thing on the ground. Now, these VFDs are basically what we call the kit VFD. So if you were to buy the VFD transmission from Vanquish, it would come with the plastic motor plate, the plastic transmission standoffs, uh, and the centered gears and everything inside. So this can be upgraded with some of the machined gears from the Pro VFD, and you can also upgrade that motor plate to an aluminum version. I really like how this transmission has a fake bell housing to cover the top shaft. That just adds a ton to the scale appearance and it hides our motor and that shaft. So I've actually seen some guys use scale hardware on this and paint it and it looks pretty sick. So now the back section of the VFD, uh, I guess we can call this the drop gear that drops from this top shaft down to the bottom shaft that's gonna go into our transfer case. Again, these are centered gears. And Vanquish also includes this really nice blue grease that's going to go on all of our gears. We use that in our portals and it's going to be used all throughout the transmission. And that is our Vanquish forward design transmission. Now we have to tackle that transfer case where all that really cool shifting happens in the twin part of the VFD twin. Well, that is about half of our VFD twin in size completed, but only about a third in actual functionality. So everything's spinning nice and free so far. So nothing's binding. It means I didn't screw anything up. Our Rock 412 fits perfectly in there and I've got the tabs clocked to what's gonna be on the right side of the truck. Cause I'm gonna mount the ESC right here and then we'll just be able to run our wires right to our tabs. So unfortunately, that's all I'm gonna be able to get done for today. It's the end of the day. I gotta go pick up my kid from soccer practice, but tomorrow we'll start bright and early. We'll get this transfer case all put together and figure out how all that dig and overdrive stuff works.